Hi guys, I'm Derek from Ritter Creek, and um, this is uh, February, February 9th, I guess, and uh, I'm about to post something, so I thought I'd do like a little, a little video blog to go with it. So in case you don't want to read, you know, I can just give you the announcements and stuff. Maybe a little bit more color. Um, so um, the news, ASL news, LFT14 has arrived. Um, we've shipped out all of our pre-orders. We're shipping same day now. You order one, it'll be in the mail um, same day. So they come shrink wrapped so that the uh, counter sheets don't get damaged, the scenario cards don't get damaged. And, uh, I, and I know everything's backwards. I haven't figured it out on my phone yet how to fix that. As soon as I do, I won't have this trouble anymore. I figured it out on FaceTime, I mean uh, Facebook, you know, when we're, when we're doing the replays and stuff. Okay, so here you go. LFT 14 and shrink. Got a few of those left. Um, what else is new? Corregidor. Great, great product from Bounding Fire. So it um, comes with two big map sheets, uh, lots of new counters, lots of rules. I just set one up. Um, I'm going to play with Tim, and it's called. Um, uh, Night of the Living Dead, and it's uh, it's a night scenario. I've only played probably two or three night scenarios in my life, and um, I'm not really good at them. But I figured, you know, we'll learn. Um, so it looks like a lot of fun. Tim, I don't think has played more than one or two either. So we'll kind of learn it together. That's Tim Bryady from Redheaded T-shirts. He makes all the cool ASL mugs and T-shirts and stuff like that. All right, um, what else do we have? We have um, uh, Lone Canuck. Canuck Publishing is about to uh, send us um, LSSAH 6. So we have the uh, first five. I don't have a copy to show you guys because it's not here yet. But we have the first five in their package. They're um, little scenario packs. Uh, I guess six or eight scenarios per pack. So you got one, two, three, four, and five. And now we got six. Six comes a little more more graphic it's got like a panther tank on it or something like that but it is six in the series so um really great really get if you if you love killing ss you know this is great scenarios to have oh something about these they are chronological so scenario pack one is uh early war like i guess 1939 or something back when the waffen ss were just like a battalion of brigade size and then pack two is I guess early war against Russia, you know, 1941 stuff, and then three will be mid war and four and five. Well, the sixth one is, um, as far as I understand, the uh, Waffen SS in Normandy. That would be 44. So maybe we'll get a LSSAH 7, which, you know, is end war, 1945, I guess, you know, Budapest and Berlin. And, uh, well, no. No, no, that's just the Waffen SS. That's not the live standard specifically. So wherever they were at the end of the war, I guess that would be live standard seven. Okay, um, if you like killing SS, also we have Heat of Battle, the update pack, which is like, which is like sixteen or twenty scenarios, something like that, of um, from the original Heat of Battle guys. So uh, we've got that. I think that's on sale. So lots of SS to kill. All right, um, let's see what else we got. We've got Red Factories, which is um, Red October mixed with Red Barricades. And this was for sale. I saw this at, um, I'm, I'm gonna thank Ray Willosen for lending me his copy because I don't actually own a copy. But um, uh, this was being sold and played at Winter Offensive. I saw it. I didn't buy one, I should have, but I didn't buy one because I'm gonna be getting my shipment, so. Um, but, and I don't have in the box everything to it because Ray already started um, punching his counters, but there's uh, there's lots of counter sheets that go with it, and lots and lots of counter sheets. And then there's, um, let's see what else we've got in here. We've got overlays, lots and lots of overlays, and then we've got four maps, two for Red Barricades, two for Red October that come in here. They're supposed to be releasing Red October 
um, on its own where you don't have to buy the whole red factories and it's a little bit cheaper but not a lot cheaper i just go ahead and get the updated graphics and counters for, for red barricades just get red factories and call it a day you know but um but yeah if you already own red barricades i guess you don't have to you can just buy red october when or if that comes out i have no idea when it was speaking of red october when it's coming out i made a mistake some of you pre-ordered red october from me and i clicked that we're going to be getting it in two weeks and we are not so if you did pay for your pre-order contact me i'm going to get you your money back and we'll just settle up later when or if red october ever comes out or you can apply it towards red factories whatever you want but that's my mistake i'm gonna get back your money on that so it just happened like a day ago so i haven't reacted to it yet so okay so that is red factory is really nice so all right um more news for me um we've got a big order from battle school for the battle dice coming back in the uh the um, Waffen SS dice, the Japanese dice, the uh, Marine Corps dice are all sold out from Battle School. I still have a few odds and ends left, a couple of the Japanese left, a couple of the uh, US Marine Corps left, and one or two of the of the Waffen SS dice, and then who knows when we'll, when we'll be back in stock, but everything else should be replenished. Um, so um, yeah, that's it, more news. Uh, starter kit four. Starter kit four is going to be with the uh, Japanese, so um, and that's gone on pre-order at MMP, and so I put it on my page. You can pre-order it from me, pay the same price as MMP, and save the shipping. So, thing about starter kit four is um, it's retailing sixty-five dollars. Pre-order forty-five dollars. So you notice that the regular trend of twenty-five uh, percent off. It, this is bigger. This is, I think, 30% off. So it's, um, and that's, that's by the time I pay shipping and stuff like that, it's at my cost. I just want to get it to you guys and, you know, hopefully get you guys in the habit of buying from me. So, but there's, uh, it is extra discount at another four or five dollars, whatever that comes to. So, um, and you get to, you get to play the Japanese and starter kit. So that's a lot of fun. And I hate to say, the only place you can get the Japanese is other, other than third party, now that uh, Rising Sun's out of print. Okay, so I don't have, obviously, a box or a picture for that, because, you know, it might be months and months before that's out. Okay, Dice Towers. I put my Dice Towers up for, for pre-order. This is the only sample I have right now, because I just, I just sent a couple out, so I don't have any finished products, but I have, I have like, uh, almost finished products. So here we go, just to show you the to show you the construction of them so this isn't padded around the hole yet but what sets this off from the other dice towers is um there there's just little subtleties so I'm not saying mine are better than you know anybody else's but certainly different so the the hole so there's an actual routed out hole here for the dice to pop out of instead of it just being sliced and then you know a tray so Kind of, kind of adds to it. The other thing which is unique, sorry, there's still sawdust in here. The other thing that's unique to mine is, I don't know if you can see it properly, but there is no cut edge to the foam that's inside. The foam actually, um, foam, oh God, I wish you could see that. It is actually inserted into the wood. So a slot is cut into the wood and then the foam is inserted. What's the reason for that? Well, one, it looks really, really nice. It looks a nice finished look. But number two is the foam can't peel off because it's actually in, inserted into the wood. So uh, uh, maybe you can see it better on the tray. I don't know if you can see really, but mm, maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway, so it gives you that kind of beveled edge of the foam instead of just a cut edge of the foam. So those are the two things. Um, we have them available in four woods. Um, we have cherry, goncalo, um, um, walnut, which you can decide to stain whatever color you want, you know, dark walnut or a natural walnut. And, um, oh, uh, African paddock. So um, now I don't have an example of it right now, but when you order, and it takes a couple weeks from the time you order to the time I complete it, because one, I have to stain it the way you want, and um, two, uh, I give you a, a matte 
for the tray that is custom. So for example, I just sent one to uh, Nader El Fara uh, with, um, with a British hero counter. He likes the British, so with a British hero counter with his name on it. And I wish I had a picture to show you guys, but I don't right now. Another one, is, another one I sent to Xavier in uh, France of LFT and his had you know a unit with his name on it and you know you can put anything you want you put the as long as it's not a copyright infringement you put anything you want you know in there for the dice to tumble out on I made one for Walter McWilliams with uh, with the 82nd Airborne logo so you know stuff like that so makes it interesting um, so those are on pre-order when not pre-order pre-sale so uh, when you order it you just order it you pay for it and then hopefully within about two weeks I get it finished up and packed up you know to your specifications and sent out to you in one of those four woods um, the price does include the shipping and I think they're at like hundred thirty dollars with the shipping okay so um, that's it for the dice towers the last thing I want to talk about is um, the uh, where the Iron Crosses grow team tournament so I think this is the sixth year we're holding this and I'll tell you about it it's a uh, ASL tournament that's held at my home and we usually have 16 players that show up this year I think we're gonna go over that a little bit this might be the last year that we can actually host here at the at my house we'll still offer lodging at my house but um, uh, we've run out of room for lodging we have um, all the bedrooms taken we have all the couches taken we have a couple people who want to sleep on air mattresses so we've got we're accommodating them but we're full Ray Willows and is also putting up some people at his house um, Tim Bryde is also putting up some people at his house so um, so we're, we're trying to keep people you know out of hotels if they don't want to go to a hotel and they can just you know save that money there's no entry fee for the tournament um, and how the team tournament works is like this uh, there's you're on a team there's three brackets on each team there's an advanced intermediate and beginner player if you whatever bracket you're in that's who you play so if you're a beginner player you don't you don't have to worry about going up and playing you know you know some really badass guy because you're always gonna play in your bracket so you can have a beginner player that goes undefeated for the whole tournament every time you win a game your team gets one point every time you lose a game your team loses one point so there's no real advantage to playing extra games. It's not like every game you win, you get a point, period. Then, you know, you play 35 games, you know, you only win 5% of them, you still win, you know, you, you still get points. This way, um, if somebody can only make it for one day, um, it's really no detriment to the to the team because they have just as much chance of winning as they do losing and taking a taking a point away. So um, there's that, it's it's friendly tournament, there's um, no um, list of scenarios that you have to play because we don't want one we want you to play what you want to play you know what you and your opponent wants to play not what I want to play you know not knocking those tournaments that you go to where they do tell you what to play you know there's a there's a purpose to that but um, number one and number two we don't want anybody practicing you know the, the it, it's friendly it's not that kind of tournament where you where you practice and you play each scenario five times so that you know exactly how to beat everybody you know we want you to go in and have fun and experience something new and you know make it less of a mathematical calculation and more of just spontaneous so uh, there's that it's uh, this year is March 28th to March 31st and um, that's a Thursday through Sunday um, we still have couple spots I mean we really don't have spots open but because it's kind of a come and go as you please tournament um, we can always fit somebody in so if you want to come you want to play I do not have lodging left though everybody's booked up so if you uh, if you want to come you'd have to take a hotel if you're from out of town um, let's see uh, that's it there are gonna be prizes and awards and stuff like that um, and it's it's really based on sportsmanship and having fun and laughing and you know we, we like to see people looking up on the table and talking and chatting and stuff. Saturday night, we usually have movie night, so we'll, we'll choose one movie. You know, um, we usually pick some, you know, um, some, you know, a little bit more obscure movie. Like, I think last year we did 1944, the movie about, uh, the movie about the Estonian 
uh, Russians and, uh, and Estonian SS. That was a great movie, by the way. If you get a chance to watch that, that's one of, one of the, one of that, that's a really, really good movie, you know? So, um, so, and that's, that's, you know, voluntary. If you want to play instead of watch the movie, you can play instead of watch the movie. And, um, that's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a good movie. I don't, I don't remember what the movie was. Usually Tim Bridey chooses what the movie is. And, uh, this year, I, I don't remember what he chose. I think he did pick one, but I'm not sure what it was. And uh, the tournament is sponsored by Ritterkrieg.com. That's me. Um, RedheadedT-shirts.com. That's Tim Bryady. A lot of really cool stuff. And uh, and LFT. So. So uh, and that's about it. That's uh, I think everything on the list for for this installment. And uh, thanks for watching. All right. Take care. Oh, uh, registration or um, contact information for the tournament. If you'd like to attend, give me a call at 336-462-4035 or uh, shoot me an email at D-R-I-T-T-E-R 519 at gmail.com. Thanks so much.